into the sandbox. I am excited that you are joining me for this 2023 recap. You know, this has been a fantastic year on multiple levels, major highs and some really challenging lows and a lot of in the middle. And what I've noticed as I've reflected, and I do this at the end of every year in preparation for the next year, and I know that's not like rocket science, not something new and and awe-inspiring because I believe that great leaders do that on the regular, not just at the end of the year. You're reflecting at the end of your day or your week or your month or your quarter in preparation for what's to come. But what's different for me about reflecting over this last year of 2023 is really taking a moment to look at some of the times in the sandbox that I felt were really great teaching moments and really great moments for me as even the teacher to be the learner in that same moment. And so I've picked some of my highlights from this last year to share with you in today's Sandbox episode. And the importance of that is I want to revisit some things that I think we might have moved through a little too quickly. You know, like having Dan Pink. That's a huge celebration that I was so honored and blessed to have Dan Pink in the sandbox with me early in the year. But talking about the power of regret, something that, as you'll remember from that episode, I don't focus on regret. That's something I've never really spent time with because of the way I grew up. I felt that focusing on regrets and the doom and gloom of that was a negative and it would take me down a path that wasn't positive. And I'm all about focusing on what we're going to do, how we're going to course correct, and what the positive momentum looks like. But what I learned from Dan in the sandbox is the power of reflecting on those regrets so that you use them as learning opportunities. And I want to share a clip with you right now of that episode where Dan is explaining to us more about how leaders, the best leaders, use the power of regret to transform their thinking and transform their action steps. Take a listen. What happens is that you lose out on the benefits. And again, we know from we know from 50 years of research some of the benefits of confronting our regrets, mm-hmm. not ignoring, not wallowing. It's a middle way. Yeah. Um, here's what we know. I'll give you an example. There's some research in social psychology showing you put people into a negotiation session. Then they come out of the negotiation session and the researchers say, what in that negotiation do you regret? Mm -hmm. That is, they tell people, they invite the negative experience. They don't try to keep it away. They say, summon that negative feeling. Mm -hmm. When you do that, in general, people do better on the next negotiation. Okay. So there's evidence that it helps make you a better negotiator. Yeah. We see the same thing with even more research on problem solving. When we reflect on our problems and, and, regret again invite that negative feeling what did we do wrong what did we not do wrong what 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 are what was our what do we regret about our strategy what do we regret about our technique uh what do we regret about any approach we're going to invite the negative feeling we become better problem solvers you see it with oh my gosh you see it with research on avoiding cognitive biases and you know sort of trying to foster clearer thinking so um Boy, I regret escalating commitment to a uh, failing course of action. I regret uh, succumbing to confirmation bias. Reflect on that. You're more likely to think clearly in the future. It, there's research showing it helps make you a better strategist. I mean, the benefits to leaders are considerable if they honestly reckon with and confront their regrets. Again, not wallowing, not ignoring just using them as information, as signals, as data, as as a message, as a knock at the door. You know, I want to thank Dan Pink for coming into the sandbox with me in early in 2023. And the conversation that we had, especially about taking that moment to confront our regrets so that we become better problem solvers, it really has stuck with me throughout this entire year. And looking at the things that I resist or I regret so that... I can solve better problems for the future. It's been a game changer for me. And I hope that you found that to also be uh, empowering for you or powerful for you as a concept to consider as you move into 2024. It's okay to look at your regrets. It's a great idea to examine them. We don't dwell there for a long time, but we use them as powerful uh, tools to move us forward. So thanks again to Dan Pink for that. 
You know, as we moved through 2023, one of the topics that I talked quite a lot about is you um, cannot change what you're willing to tolerate. And I have a clip for you that I want you to take a listen to as you go into planning out or the final stages for many people, planning out your 2024. You want to take a look at those things that you've been tolerating, those behaviors in yourself and in others. And I want you to take a look at it from this perspective. Take a listen. We tolerate behaviors in others that we are afraid of confronting for ourselves, and it impacts the health and the culture of the team and the organization. So if you want to see change, let's dissect and look at what are you tolerating. And this individual I was sharing with you was tolerating their own avoidant behavior tactics, avoidant behavior patterns of confronting and having what I call bold conversations with their team members about the behaviors and the output that were getting in their way to success. So you see, fear has been, (laughs) the fear of being seen as, insert whatever your word is, whatever you fear being seen as, as the leader, might just be a driver for you that's allowing unproductive behaviors as it was for this individual to continue versus the effort to address them up front and learning the skills to have those conversations up front can remove those behaviors, reinsert positive behaviors that we want to get to the outcomes that we want. You see, we identify what we're tolerating and we change us before we change others. You know, you've heard me say it before. You cannot lead others until you lead yourself well, right? You should not lead. Like learn to lead yourself well before you lead others. I've said it multiple ways and for multiple days and years. Learn to lead yourself well first before you lead others. It's super important. Now, we all know that my approach is rather bold, right? (laughs) Like I'm more direct than most people and I hear that all the time. But that's also why I get calls and text messages from people that say, hey, I'm challenged with this situation. How would you handle it? Here's how I would handle it. You put it through your filter. Let's get you comfortable to the level of taking a step forward in a new direction for you. You don't have to do it Tammy's way. That's okay. But here's what I want you to see. Here's what I want you to know. Until you uncover what your driver is for allowing those unproductive behaviors to continue versus addressing them head on, it goes back to the original statement. What you tolerate, right? What you tolerate will never change. You cannot change what you are unwilling to take a look at. You cannot change what you are willing to tolerate. So until you become unwilling to tolerate those behaviors you no longer see or you no longer like or that are not serving you, friend, guess what? They're going to stay there and they're going to multiply. You know, I got to really give a shout out to a pastor that I have followed for many years and read his books and Listen to his podcast, Pastor Craig Groeschel. He's got a phenomenal leadership podcast that I have been a fan favorite of since the beginning. And he actually introduced me to the whole idea of you cannot change what you're willing to tolerate and really doing that self-examination or examination with others on your team. You know, a lot of times, and I said it in episode nine as well, there are leaders that will tolerate behaviors from their high performers that they would never tolerate from another mediocre or low performer on their team. And that's because, and it goes back to confronting the individual behaviors. It's not about the person, but it's about the behavior. And you want to confront the behavior to change it. Otherwise, you're sending mixed messages as a leader. And that's something that I know there are personalities in the sandbox that are getting in your way as a leader to effectively lead your team because you're tolerating behaviors and you're actually promoting through that tolerating behaviors. You're promoting other negative behaviors and outcomes. So I'm hoping that as you go into reflecting into how am I going to be different in 2024, you're going to take a look at those behaviors in self and others that you've been willing to tolerate that you really want to make the change and then put the pieces together to make the change. 
And it's about having a bold conversation. It's about having a SBI conversation, situation behavior impact, and they can be done real quick and in a hurry and effectively to transform the way that people are operating in the day to day in your business. So that said, that then leads me to episode 15, be better, not perfect. Kind of like, hey, leader, I'm talking to you. It's about being better, not perfect. And we can talk about confronting our regrets and we can talk about changing the things that, you know, that you're, that you're no longer willing to tolerate, right? Because the opposite of you cannot change it. Well, let's talk about how we change the things that you aren't willing to tolerate any longer. It's about taking steps forward to be better, not perfect. And, you know, a lot of times high performing leaders have such high expectations of self right? High expectations of others that we have perfection as the goal. And that is a quick way to turn out and burn out. Your folks are going to turn out the door and they're going to walk to another job because they, they cannot make meet your expectation. You're going to burn out trying to be perfect instead of making it clear what the measurement is or the markers are to being better each and every day. 1% better, cool. 10% better, fantastic. Just make sure you're tracking it and then celebrating it. It's so important. But I want you to take a listen to this from episode 15 because be better, not perfect is always the target and the goal. Well, they're thinking um, if the goal isn't to be better, it's really to make sure we're hitting our numbers, we're hitting our targets, we're hitting our goals, and our team is intact, and we're nurturing and taking care of those relationships. But for the perfectionistic mindset in the person that's saying, no, we have these errors, you know, how many times have you actually been in a team meeting and you've heard people only talk about the negative? Only talk about the things that aren't working. Only talk about the frustrations that they have with the things that are failing. Instead of, as you know, I say, start every meeting with a celebration to get people thinking in what's possible and get them into that creative mindset that is so important. But I also say, as you're going through those, you know, that that celebration aspect of it, it's okay to point out the things that we're missing the mark on. But we don't dwell there. We come up with a plan quickly to course correct it. So we're improving versus being stuck and dwelling in what didn't work. That's where that perfectionistic mindset also gets really troubled, if you will. They get troubled because they can't connect the dots between where we are to where we want to be. And the fail points in between are so frustrating. They limit them and they, they impact their communication. And I've just had this happen in recent weeks with a team that was really locked into what we're not doing and how come it's not perfect and it should be perfect. And they really were, they really were in a mode of shooting all over themselves. And, and, and that's where they got stuck. But when we took it out of, well, who said it needs to be perfect? And what happens if we don't hit the target? And what happens if we're not perfect every single time? What happens when we fail? What happens when we're late? What happens when we just kept inserting that question? What happens when? And what's interesting about that in that dialogue and in that moment, and when people would take it to the large whiteboard or to the flip charts on the wall and would map out the what happens, what's the consequence? What's the outcome for not being perfect? Well, there are some perfect, some professions, I will tell you this, we all can list off the professions that if perfect is not the goal, right? If perfect is not the goal, then there are people that will not make it through surgery. There are planes that will not make it to their destinations. There are, there are, there are. But you see, there are, with those specifics, there are markers that they have in place on what to do at every step of the engagement. You can have that same level of checkpoints, right? with your team and with yourself as well. So you're striving to be better. You're striving to keep moving forward. What happens in the perfectionism mindset is we lock on to it's only this way or that way, right? My way or the highway. It's either up or it's down. It's black or white, right or wrong. And when we are that legalistic in that thinking, we fail. 
We fail to see the creative opportunities for improvement. We fail to see the creative voices or hear the creative voices that our team members are bringing. So when we get so focused on being perfect, we lose the opportunity to actually be better every day. All right. I have loved what we have covered so far. And we are coming down to the last two highlights from 2023 that I want to get to. One that thing that if you know anything about me, you know this to be true. I love a good by when. And for people that have worked with me, for people that have volunteered for, with me, my own family will tell you I'm very, very passionate about a good by when. Because I believe that that helps us to set clarity of expectations, which is what we talked all about in episode five. And there's one key piece I want to bring your attention to as you're getting ready to turn the page on 2023 and go into 2024. I want you to look at this key concept in episode five around the setting of expectations when it comes to people over process. So many high-performing leaders put process first in everything, process and strategy. Be strategic and think about your processes. And I love that. I love a good process and I love a good strategy. However, not at the expense of our people, okay? And when that gets upside down for our people is when we don't have the clarity of expectations set. We have a process in place, but the clarity of the expectations when you involve the people in that is that by when and is the, is the component that helps everyone to see what you're needing, wanting, and expecting, and it's written out and they can get bought into it. You're eliciting their feedback and buy-in. That's people over process. You might have the process in place. That's great. How do you put the people up at the top of that? You ask for their involvement. But I want you to take a listen to this, cut, this snippet of episode five because it goes into a little bit more detail around setting expectations, why setting expectations is important, as well as the need for a great buy-when to ensure that people over process wins the day every time. Take a listen. People over process is a winning game every single time. As long as we have accountabilities and expectations and proper training to go along with that. Playing to win versus playing not to lose with our employees is having proper processes, trainings, expectations with buy wins to go along with that process so that your team member as the leader, you, you've you set that expectation and your team member knows what you've expected. And then they also know that they can count on that you're going to hold them to that commitment that they make when they say, yes, I'm going to do this project. Yes, I'm going to meet your deliverable. Yes, I'm going to do it with excellence because you've already framed out for them. You've cast vision for them what that success looks like. How about that? So did you did you get it? Did you get the clarity for yourself as you're moving into the final stages of planning this new year? Did you get that final clarity for yourself around the the power of the why in setting expectations and detailing out the why as well as putting people over process? So key to your success in 2024. And I know leader that once you get a hold of that, you're going to have some epic transformation on your team as well. The by when is always my favorite. Y'all know that. So as we move into our final snippet of highlights from 2023 in the sandbox, I'm going to talk about a topic that is, is so underutilized. It is a tool that is so underutilized. People think that they know this. They think they know how to do this. And I have seen tremendous fail points for people not knowing how to do this. And that is active listening. In episode 18, we covered this topic. We got into the nuances, the body language, what active listening is and what it is not and why it's important. And in this clip, we're going to go through an, a very short and clear, concise detail point that I want you to get a hold of because all of these points that I'm highlighting from the episodes of 2023 are feeding into how you're going to set yourself up for great success in 2024. So take a listen to this around active listening. And remember, active listening is a presence that you bring. 
It's something, though, you're going to learn from this snippet. There's a piece to it that you want to make sure to shut off from doing. Because when we do this one thing, we actually aren't active listening, and it can have a catastrophic impact, and it really can unfortunately have a negative outcome with your team members or with the individual that you're trying to even navigate through conflict with. This one thing, if you do this, ugh, you're going to set yourself up for hardship. Learn how to do the opposite by listening in on this episode 18 clip from 2023. Now, when you're going back into tackle these difficult conversations, the idea is to, not the idea, the want is to always be practicing active listening. And this means really taking the time to listen to what the other person is saying and to listen to what you're seeing in their body language without letting yourself get distracted or sidetracked by your own thoughts and reactions. See, we can have our own thoughts and reactions and we immediately go into problem solving. That's probably one of the biggest challenges that I have. When I learned the skill, when I went through my executive coaching uh, certification program years ago, active listening actually was a um, game changer for me, but it was also really challenging because I'm a fixer in my mind and I go to solutions first. I hear a problem and I'm right in solution. Well, when you're in, in resolving a conflict, I can't go to solution for another person who's bringing me the conflict. I've got to stay neutral, be active in my listening and engaged with what the person is saying to me so I can seek to understand the view from their chair and then ask questions to understand it more deeply. Then together we can co-create what a solution is. So that active listening is not me or not you, friend, going right into, I'm going to solve this problem because I got to move on. It takes a hot minute. It takes some time. You'll get better and more efficient at it. But active listening is key. And when I inserted at the beginning of that about active listening and practicing it and the body language, you want to be checking in on the body language. You want to be checking in to say, what am I noticing in your expression and your body language right now? I noticed that your arm, you crossed, you said this and you crossed your arms. Tell me what that feeling is for you. You can check in with that. That's digging deeper to seek to understand, to uproot the pain of the conversation and get clear on the what we need and want as an outcome. All right. How about that? I have loved being able to share with you the snippets from, the highlights from 2023. You know, it was an idea that actually came from my podcast producer and he's like, you need, just need to do a recap. Just do the highlights. I'm like, yeah, that's a really good idea, actually. And because I want to bring your attention back to key points that were highlights for me that are some of my favorites. And there were others. It was hard for the team to pick. But those were just a few of the learning moments, the teaching moments that I want you to get a hold of because I believe in the power of Closing out a year, closing out a relationship, closing out a season, closing out an experience well. Close it out well. Why? Because when we leave it well, it sets us up for what we're going into in a better, more powerful position. More powerful internally, personally, emotionally, as well as even in a spiritual mindset of what's coming and what's possible for you. So, as we come into this new year, I want to share a couple of little highlights for you of highlights. They're not highlights. That's what we just did. I want to share some exciting news. I'm just going to give you a couple of little tidbits. You know, we're going to be really diving in deep this next year into the sandbox and the characters of the sandbox. We've actually expanded. You have more than just your sand thrower, your castle kicker, your shovel stealer, your hoarder, and your negative Nelly. We've got some more characters that we're going to be introducing, and these are the seven that I believe are in every work team. You might have some individuals with multiple personalities that are taking on the personas of two of these characters with the negative behavior traits. But we're going to be getting into the sandbox characters, and you're going to have a tool accessible to you in the new year that I'm excited for you to be able to download that's going to help you to identify the characters you have and the behaviors and what those behaviors are costing you and your team in the sandbox. 
Because if you have a sand thrower, a shovel stealer, if you have a, a, a negative Nelly and they're constantly in the workplace stirring and churning up their own negativity, their own hostility, their own frustrations, their own lack of excellence, it impacts everyone. And that's what leads to 90% of the work being done by 10% of the workforce or 70% of the work being done by a 10% of the workforce and then the others getting done by a few. You know, there's statistics that show the negative impact that behaviors have in the workplace. And we're going to be using the characters from the sandbox that have been around for 10 years now. And we've added some new additions for you to identify so that you can start not just casting out those behaviors, but addressing those behaviors in the people that I believe you have value in. Just how do you change their behaviors so that they're not destructive in the workplace anymore? That's to come in 2024. And I'm so excited to be sharing that with you. And we're changing up the format of our podcast. We're going to have a Tammy talk time because we've been getting and collecting a lot of questions. And I, I want to hearken you back to the days of Dear Abby, <laughs> right? If you were like me as a kid, man, you loved reading that in the newspaper. And I'm going to hearken back to that time because people are bringing me questions all the time. We're collecting questions on, hey, Tammy, I have this situation happening in the workplace. How would you handle it? And I'm going to be diving into those questions in the sandbox in 2024. So we have some exciting changes coming. Thank you for an amazing 2023. I can't wait to see you the next time in the sandbox. Make it a great day. Thank you.